fellow Dungeon Seekers. This is Colonel Majora. That's Colonel Majora. Not Colonel Majora. I've been meaning to address this to Dimrish for uh, a while. I keep forgetting, though. Like Cinnamon's past issue, people seem to pronounce my name exactly as it's spelt, and that's not right. Uh, it's not Colonel, it's Colonel. But anyway, Colonel Majora is here to delight your ears with some ranting and railing about how his very first Zelda theory. I'm not exactly one of the most popular or, well, active people on Zelda Dungeons uh, forums, but since the very first podcast, I've wanted to get involved, so here I am. But anyway, specifically, I've been thinking about the Gerudo. If you don't know who the Gerudo are, they're a tribe completely of women, with one man born into their tribe every 100 years. Don't ask me how that works. Um, they always live in the deserts of Hyrule. Um, they really don't like outsiders, especially men. And they first showed up in Ocarina of Time, and showed up again in Four Swords Adventures. And the ones in Majora's Mask don't count right now, because my theory only applies to the ones in Hyrule, not in Termina. Uh, but most importantly, they're well organized and intelligent. These traits will be relevant in a moment. But anyway, I thought, well, that's what they are. That's who they are. Uh, but why? Why are they in the deserts, and why do they hate outsiders? So I thought, the pre Hyrulean Civil War, mentioned in Ocarina of Time's backstory, it involved. Um, all of Hi of pre Hyrule tribes uh, fighting for undisclosed reasons before the king unified the country of Hyrule. And I don't know if the Gerudo are also fighting or not, but they were driven to the desert lands of Hyrule. This alone would be enough to anger anybody, uh, but I don't think that's all that happened. But as I said, the Gerudo are smart. The Spirit Temple from Ocarina of Time pr probably has puzzles designed by them. I mean, objects in Ocarina of Time had ge the Gyarados symbol on them, like the crystal switches, foot switches, pushable blocks, things like that. And not to mention the entirety of the Gyarados training grounds and the archery range. And in Twilight Princess, Arbiter's Grounds was filled with mechanics and medieval technology. And judging by its uh, many similarities to the Spirit Temple, uh, and the fact that it's in the Gerudo Desert. I think Arbiter's Grounds was probably mostly, if not completely, made by the Gerudo. Now, what I think is, yes, they were angry because they were driven to the desert, but I think they were even angry because these designs were valuable. They were noteworthy, and they were not even taken into account when they were pushed to the desert. They were denied appreciation completely. And plus, why would these marked mechanisms and objects even be in dungeons outside of the deserts and stuff? Uh, the, the other races and tribes, I think, either used it with the Gyarados' permission and still didn't even take them into account when pushing the Gyarados to the desert, or they pushed them to the desert and just use them without caring about what the Gerudo thought. And the Gerudo would be like, hey, you're using our stuff. Oh, no way, you now you think that we're out of the way, you can just use them all you want? No way. In the Gerudo's eyes, the other races are just not looking kind at all. <laughs> um, but that's all about, I think about that. Next up is what happened after Ocarina of Time. And is related to timeline theory, sort of, so this is kind of up in the air. But, anyway, I'm, I'm sure that most people can agree that Ocarina of Time comes rather early in the over overall timeline. I'm not a huge timeline theorist, but one thing I do believe in is the split timeline theory. Oh, and, and that Twilight Princess and Four Swords Adventures come after Ocarina of Time. If you don't know what the timeline, split timeline theory is, just a quick rundown. After Ocarina of Time, um, Hyrule is broken into two parts. 
Hyrule A, the future that Link went to and beat Ganon in. He beat Ganon, he left, back to his childhood, and so Link is gone, Adult Zelda remains, Ganon is sealed away in the Sacred Realm. Hyrule B is the time that Link went back to. So you got Kid Link, you got Z Kid Zelda, and Ganon hasn't done his evil plans yet. But let's think of Hyrule A, the future. No Link, Zelda's still in there, uh, and Ganon is sealed away. After Ocarina of Time, the many tribes celebrate peace in Lon Lon Ranch. The Gyarados are celebrating with them. Here's what I think happened. They end up getting along for a long, long time, decades to come, and eventually reintegrate themselves into society, leave the desert for good. That would explain why they're not in Twilight Princess. But here's another thought. What if, Hi if Twilight Princess was in Hyrule B, where Kid Link, Kid Zelda, and Ganon are there? Back in Link's childhood time, Ganon never would have got the chance to attack because Link would have witnessed the future events and returned to tell of coming dangers. So there would be no need to save the kingdom because there would be nothing to save the kingdom from. He would have never got the chance to attack. I.e., no need to celebrate anything. No need for the Gerudo to come and celebrate with anyone. They don't get along with anyone. They never make peace with the other tribes. The Gerudo would still be in the desert with all their hatred and everything. And in Twilight Princess, Aru, the old man, says, the Gerudo Desert once held a prison and to hold the worst criminals this land has ever known. The criminals who were sentenced to death were sent directly to the underworld by a cursed mirror that was kept in the prison. Some believe that those criminals were the Gerudo. You know, and including me, I think that was the Gerudo. If they had been segregated in the desert for long enough without getting along with anyone, they would have had enough pent-up anger towards the rest of Hyrule to become ruthless criminals, meaning they would be sent to the Twilight Realm sentenced after being sentenced to death and never show up in Twilight Princess. That covers that game, but there's still Four Swords Adventures. There's not really much to say, though. I mean, they're pretty friendly in Four Swords Adventures, and that's why I think, again, it happened in Hyrule A, uh, the future. Uh, the Gyarado would have made peace with everyone and remained friendly. And yeah, um, that's pretty much all I got. I'm sure the Gyarado will turn up again in future games, and I'm sure that there will be more to think about if they are significant in those games. But until then, I want you guys to think about this. I want you to think of the things I've brought up and, you know, respond to me. If, is there something that I missed? Is there something that I said that you think doesn't really make sense or doesn't work with my theory? Or is there something that completely contradicts my theory altogether? Uh, I want to know. So email me at colonelmajora at gmail.com That's C-O-L-O-N-E-L-M-A-J-O-R-A at gmail.com It's all one word. Um, but thanks so much for listening. I've been happy to make a submission for this awesome podcast. I've had some awesome submissions before me. Um, I've had some favorites that have just inspired me to do this. Like, um, the submissions from Duck Noises and Random Person from podcast number two. You know, Is Majora Evil and The Red Star Theory. Um, and The Great Clocktown Architecture submission from podcast number 11. I remember that one, uh, that one well. Um... But it's just been an honor to be on the same cast as these awesome theorists and all the other ones. But that's all I got, so thanks for hearing me ramble, and I'll return it to Din and Rish. Hope to talk to you guys again sooner or later, so I'll see you then!